All right, guys and girls, it's Ozzy Grimm with the Gamers Grimm. And we are back this week in Starfield with another one of our custom vanilla ship builds. Today we're going to be going over the Sky Sunder. Uh, this is a fun little ship to uh, for me to build. It is a Class B Star Fortress. I really wanted to create a platform uh, for automated turrets on a Class B ship. And I really wanted to use a lot of the Tayo parts and uh, these engines here because I really liked uh, just the, the curvature and the silhouette. And I just wanted to make a really good all-around Class B ship for you guys, uh, especially for those of us that are like me that are really into turrets. And I, I don't want to put too much work into combat. I want the computer to do most of the work. It is the uh, future as he is. so we may as well take advantage of uh, future technology but yeah this is an amazing little ship uh, i want to remind you guys to please like subscribe comment and share it really helps out the channel we are just cruising over the last two months uh getting those subs up and uh we i'm i'm enjoying it and uh you guys just don't know how much it means to me that uh, we're moving the way that we're moving. So let's keep on going. But let's get back to the Sky Sunder. Class B ship, really, really comfortable ship. Uh, it boards in the back. Uh, I tried a million different ways to get it to board in the front. And uh, because this is not a ladderless build, it just, there's too many different ways that the ladders and doors will interfere. But uh, finding out that I could kind of squeeze this bay in between these two engines really helped out and uh, created a really wonderful floor plan for the Sky Sunder. So we'll head in. And the first thing you'll see here is we are in a companionway, and that is where your docker is, is right there. But we will come out and into this Tayo all-in-one berth, two by two, very comfortable, lots of beds, it's got a galley for you to cook in, and uh, for that we have ourselves an armory. This could be whatever you want it to be. These are just your standard two by ones. And then of course, uh, every good ship has a captain's quarters, very comfortable right next to your two by two. And this is sort of your crew quarters. And then of course, just in front uh, of the docker, you have the ladder up, and it takes us up to uh, what I think of as the uh, maintenance deck or the like machinist deck and uh it's got two two by ones up here i currently have a i believe this is a laboratory and a workshop again most of these it can be whatever you want them to be but it is a super super comfortable layout and uh of course everybody loves a really nice cockpit and we get to take advantage of this Contiki cockpit really buffs your crew lots of uh, lots of viewing that you can see out and look out over your weapons like you see here and perform your inspections before you take off uh, into the sky which is what we are going to do now so that you can see the sky sunder in space I always try to aim to uh, get you guys an all vanilla build. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about having mods or doing any of the uh, exploits or clipping tree tricks. I occasionally might use one or two, but generally I do complete vanilla builds and try to keep them as original as I can for you guys so that we can have fun. And like you said, I got everything perfectly balanced out uh, with the uh, equipment and gear that you have so that you don't have to worry about fiddling with anything. And uh, we'll go into the orbital here and you can see the Sky Sunder in flight. Very good looking ship. Takes advantage of a lot of the Tayo parts. You'll probably build 99% of this ship uh, at the Tayo shipyard. And then you will probably need to scooch on over uh, to the Stroud Eklund shipyard in uh, Neon for that cockpit. Uh, but the rest of the ship can be bought at Tayo uh, and in your regular uh, ship building uh, at your base. But yeah, it's a very good looking ship, uh, very comfortable, and uh, boy, it does pack a lot of, a lot of firepower. 
Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the uh, ship builder. We'll just do a quick overview of how you might lay this uh, ship out and uh, how to put the parts together so you can make your very own Sky Sunder. So we'll be right back. All right, guys, we are back here in the ship builder and I have the Sky Sunder pulled apart here. And uh, you can see the basic layout that you're going to need to start with is, of course, with that uh, two by one, two by two uh, all in worm berth from Tayo. And right next to that, you're going to put your two by one. And then in front of that, you're going to put another two by one uh, in this arrangement here. And then, of course, you're going to have yourself a, a Tayo companion way that connects to your Tayo uh, Shipfed 200 landing bay from Tayo. And underneath that, on there, you will put a 100 DP, a slim docker, a bottom. Um, alternatively, you can put uh, a different docker on, on the top if you want, uh, but this is probably the best docker uh, for the ship build. So then you will take uh, your other companion way, which will go uh, just in front of this one, not over the top of it, and uh, you will attach your 2x1s uh, top just like you see here. Uh, one thing to note is that these Tayo uh, are bottoms and they are B's and they have the snap points. Uh, this particular bottom right here, the Tayo 2x1 bottom A, uh, you don't need to have any snap points on it. Uh, if you do want to add additional weapons or maybe mounts on this one, I would suggest going with the B. But if you want to maintain that smooth transition all the way up into your landing gear, uh, go with the bottom A here because you won't need any snap points on it. And speaking of landing gear, we are going to have three of these pinpoint 4G landing gears. You're going to put this one here uh, just in front of that bottom a two by one. And these other two will go right behind. You see just like that, but behind your two by one and your two by two. See? So, and we'll continue on. Uh, we have our uh, RD300, 3000 beta grav drive, and you will put it right behind that companion way, just like you see here, and your 104 DS mag inertial reactor. You can put any of the Class A, well, or Class B reactors and grav drives that you want uh, there. Uh, but that is where they go. So, um, we will have uh, some structural pieces, which are the Tayo mid caps, and they go just like this. And then here's where you're going to stick your cargo, the Galleon S202, a cargo hold. Uh, and it will go in front there, although you could put it wherever you want or go with a different uh, setup for your uh, cargo. But in this particular build, I like these cargo because they have that nice uh, checker pattern uh, that you see there in the front. It sort of gives the uh, ship some character. Uh, we do have, of course, the Contiki B600 bridge. This is the reason we built this ship. We really wanted to have this big, giant uh, bridge on top of this uh, massive, uh, well-armed star fortress so that we could see everything that was going on. And it will go uh, over the top of that companionway that you put there just like that. Um, and we will continue on with our gear setup. Uh, we do have some of the Pinpoint 4 G landing gears, uh, port side and aft side, that we will attach directly to the sides of there. And that is where you will find uh, your first set of turrets that you're going to add. And you're going to add the Disruptor 3320 Neutron turrets from Horizon Defense, and they will attach to those landing gears. We do have some uh, tile braking engine caps. There's also a cap port that's not a braking engine that you could put here if you really want to. Um, and we'll go over here to, of course, the starboard side and uh, not the aft. Aft is the rear of the ship. Um, but this is the starboard side and it has additionally two more landing gear and a braking engine. And the turrets that you will add to these are the Eradicator 75 MEV Auto Neutron Turrets from Light Scythe. Um, and they go just like that. And that's where you put them. Um, and we will have some decorative braking engines that we stick here. 
You could put uh, a cap port there if you wanted, but we're going to put some braking engines so that when we're braking, we get to see the uh, flames coming out of it. And on front, we have some of those Tayo cowlings, top and bottom, to uh, make that front symmetrical. And so we will have a few decorative pieces, but they exist so that we can put our gas tanks on. And that are, uh, these will be the uh, Nova cowlings that you see here. And then, of course, our gas tanks are the M30 Ulysses Helium-3 tanks that go in the rear, uh, just like you see, so that we get that nice, uh, beautiful silhouette uh, from the front of the ship to the back. And uh, we do have a Warden SG-400 shield generator. Very nice Class B shield. You could alternatively put uh, the Vanguard Bulwark shield here as well, because this is a Class B ship. Um, in this case, I just really liked uh, the way this shield looked. It, uh, it's not as good as the Vanguard Bulwark shield. It takes a little less power. Um, so, but I think it looks I think it looks cool, and that's why I put it there. So we will go to the engines. Of course, we have these Nova 1050 engines from Relidine, uh, um, and they are some nice Class B engines. Probably not the best that you can get uh, within a Class B ship, but they look so good with this build, so they were worth having. So we will have four of those arranged in the back, just like you see here. And uh, we have a couple more decorative pieces that uh, play a role. These are demo spines. You can get these pretty much anywhere. And uh, that is where we were going to attach our final weapon. We'll go ahead and pop these on here along the side, just like this. And then we have a demo spine D aft that goes right up and and pushes quite nicely up against the, the uh, cockpit there and kind of looks cool. And then a third one of these Demo Spines. And on there, we will attach the PBO 100 Auto Neutron Turrets. And there will be three of those and two of each of the others. And this will consume the exact amount of power that you need. You will not have to manage them at all. Um, that's one of the reasons I go for that, is that you can just quickly auto uh, assign all of the power and not take any power from anywhere that you don't want it to go. And uh, of course, last but not least, we have ourselves a Hope Tech nose B aft. And it goes on the back there just to kind of cover up the ugly. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Sky Sunder. And that is how you will build it. Uh, lovely little ship. Lots of fun to fly around in great for combat scenarios and if you don't have access to all the parts or you just don't have uh, level four ship building uh, this is a ship that can really carry you through the game and uh, again it's a completely vanilla build you can build this without any mods or any trickery you just can build this bad boy and enjoy it for yourself and i hope that you do and uh, i hope to see you next time uh, this has been Ozzy Grimm with the Gamers Grimm.